Today you're going to learn the top three inverted row variations everyone needs to try. These are super effective because they offer a lifetime of progress from beginner to advanced. It's time to decrease asymmetry, increase horizontal pulling strength and grow a bigger back. Before we dive in and discuss further, what's your favorite inverted row variation? Comment and let me know what you think. Let's begin with one of my favorite inverted row variations, the single arm row. I like it so much because it can be programmed for absolutely all levels. This section, we're gonna talk technique. Let's start with the grip. You've got three different choices. You've got the pronated, you have the neutral grip, and also the supinated grip. What you choose depends on your preference. All of them target the back muscles at large. Those of you that choose the pronated grip, you can go ahead with this one if your main goal is improving pull-ups, just thanks to the grip and specificity of the pulling pattern. For those of you that want to get some more size on those biceps, doing a supinated chin-up grip is going to preferentially target the bicep muscle. For those of you that can't decide which grip you should use, I recommend the neutral grip. The reason for this is we don't use it that much in our calisthenics practice and it targets different muscle groups in our arm, specifically the brachioradialis and the brachialis of the upper arm. It's a great way to complement your calisthenics practice and add some variation. Let's discuss the question that is on everyone's mind. What should my scapula be doing during rows? You've got two options. You've got the active or the full range of motion disengaged to engage row. Neither is right or wrong. Personal preference is huge, but let's have a look at what both look like in action. The first one is, as I said, straight arm, scapula engaged row. You keep this position between repetitions. The alternate variation is a full range of motion. So here at the bottom, you allow yourself to relax at the shoulder and engage. So you're resetting that between repetitions. Neither is better or worse, as long as if you're using globally successful rowing technique elsewhere, it's all good. I'd like to share with you a pro tip to get more from your inverted rows. It's what you're doing with the non-working side. I find it helpful when I'm doing my rows to straighten the arm, squeeze the fist, and also push it in towards my body. The reason why I do this is it creates more full body stability through your entire kinetic chain, and it feeds into stronger rows and all the gains that come from that as well. Next up, let's talk about the posture for inverted rows, and this is important for all levels, beginner to advanced. You want to keep your hips extended like this and your abs braced. This midline stability allows you to actually use your back muscles. What I don't want people to be doing is flopping around, using momentum during their inverted rows. You wanna stay tight through the glutes, use your hamstrings and also your abs. Because we're doing a single arm exercise, our base of support is also very important. I recommend a shoulder width apart foot placement for maximum stability. So if you're doing one of the more beginner variations, having your feet and legs at 90 degrees is going to be excellent. But as you get more advanced, when you straighten your legs, keep the hips extended, keep the legs straight, keep the ab engaged between every single row that you do. Next up is full range of motion. When it comes to rowing, the exercise is challenging because it's a descending strength curve exercise. This means as we pull and towards the top, the difficulty increases. This just means we need to pay even more attention to using full range of motion to get the full benefits. What that looks like in practice is as I come up, I'm aiming to get my elbow at least meeting my side, if not a little bit further. A nice thing to aim for is at the top of the ring row, you wanna try and touch your chest to the ring. That's a good tactile feedback that you're using a full range of motion. The most common mistake that I see with rows is people doing half reps, and this just robs you of the opportunity to make gains in the back and scapula department. How many people do you see doing this? Coming up just like this. Exercise is probably too hard or you're just not using the correct technique. 
You really wanna use that full range of motion to get all the elbow flexion benefits and the scapula engagement that comes only when using a full range of motion. Because single arm rows are a unilateral exercise, always start with your non-dominant weaker arm first. Rest 30 to 45 seconds, then use the other arm doing a equal number of repetitions that you did on the previous arm. Our body weight inverted row progression is very straightforward. It all relies on our body position in relation to space. Beginners, you wanna start at more of an incline posture like this. As you get more advanced, you progressively walk your way further and further down towards horizontal, and this increases the load going through your upper body. To continue increasing the difficulty, keep working yourself closer towards horizontal, and then you can progress towards elevating the feet. This is gonna reduce even more of the assistance from your lower body, from your legs, and make your upper body do so much more work. It's pretty intense, and it's perfect for those that are more advanced. Single arm rows can continue being useful for a lifetime of progress if you use tempo successfully. Start off with by lowering the negative or the eccentric slower. Take the time to really dominate and control every single negative like this. Regardless of the progression that you're using in terms of body posture, apply that and it's gonna be so much more difficult. Next up is adding a pause or an isometric into your rows. Firstly, doing that at the top at that peak contraction increases time under tension, increases the strength where it matters at that top position. Next up is adding a pause in the bottom here like this. Doing that every single repetition takes away the stretch reflex, forces your muscles to do the work and you to get stronger. Single arm rows have three key benefits. Number one is reducing asymmetry side to side. Because we're doing one arm at a time, we can reduce the inevitable differences that exist between our non-dominant and dominant arms. We can do this by performing equal reps on both sides, and eventually this difference between arms is going to not be so significant. Number two is concerning incremental intensity adjustment. If you walk the feet just a little bit further towards horizontal, the exercise difficulty gets drastically harder. And this is heightened because we're doing a unilateral movement. Awesome, awesome that the intensity and the difficulty can be modified for a long time to come. And point number three is the rings are very friendly on the joints. Because they're free to move, combined with the exercise being on a single arm, it's really, really nice on your wrist, elbow, shoulder. You're not going to get the joint strain that is associated with using a fixed bar. That's one of the pros of rings. As you can see, rings are powerful for unlocking your calisthenics potential. Download my Body by Rings program to learn how. Let's move on to a calisthenics compound classic, the weighted bodyweight row. You got two variations to choose from. You can put the weight plate onto your stomach or you can use a dip belt setup to add weight to this classic exercise. Let's see how to do both. The setup is a little bit of a pain, but I can assure you the weighted bodyweight row with the dip belt is awesome. I really like it because the weight plate stays in place and you don't have to worry about balancing it. You can simply worry about getting the most from your rows and progressing that load over time. The setup is very simple. You want to attach the dip belt over your stomach. You want to clip in and you want to choose a setup where there's not much space between the weight plate and your back just so that the plate doesn't touch the ground. And then over the middle of your body, you can see here that when I'm doing my rows, I'm loaded up with the exercise, but I can just keep linearly progressing this over time. Can elevate my feet. Like I said, it's an awesome exercise for long-term progression without worrying about balance. For those of you that want a quick and easy setup with your weighted rows, you can't go wrong with simply just putting the weight plate on your body. The downside with this particular technique is once you increase the weight a fair bit, you have to be mindful of trying to balance the weight 
So in a way this is bad because the weight plate could fall off. In a way it's good because it forces that strict technique. Here's how you want to do it. So you grab the plate, you get it onto your stomach, you set yourself up in the body weight row here, all good body mechanics applying. You row up, you row down. As I said, this is really quick and easy for those of you that are a bit lazy when it comes to your setup, but you can't go wrong with weighted rows for long-term growth. Weighted rows also have three key benefits. Number one, intensity. You can linearly increase the load over time and continue progressing. Number two, efficiency. Because this is a bilateral compound exercise, you can get the job done in a really time efficient manner. Number three, optimal rep range. You can choose to continue getting results in the eight to 15 repetition range to build muscle and get stronger. On to the next one. Let's finish with the third inverted row progression everyone needs to try, the front lever row. This one is excellent for improving front lever strength because we're combining bent and straight arm strength in every single repetition. What I also like about front lever rows is it affords a lifetime of progress through the manipulation of body posture. Let's talk about technique. Because we're using rings, we should be using a rotational pulling pattern. So you're going to start in pronation. As you pull, you're going to go towards a neutral grip. In terms of the range of motion, it is a challenging exercise, but you have to strive to get that elbow to meet the side. A little bit further is bonus points if you can achieve it. And lastly, I want you to end every rep with a straight arm before you continue doing more rows. To continue making your front lever rows more challenging over time, we need to manipulate posture and change the leverage. Beginners, you're going to start, as I showed you, in a tuck shape. So from here, it's gonna be easier to do your rows, less demand on the back. As you get stronger, you want to lengthen the lever until you're doing your rows in more elongated body shapes. This is why front lever rows are excellent for all levels because they offer that lifetime progress. They'll continue to be challenging and continue to produce results. Cheers everyone for watching. Drop a thumbs up below to support Fitness FAQs. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell button to never miss a new video. Otherwise, I'll see you very soon on Fitness FAQs.